let's go ahead and talk about the pros of playing poker at the casino. We're gonna compare it to firstly online play, and then we're gonna compare it to private games. So first, comparing casino poker to online play, definitely there's the social experience. Um, being someone who grinds a lot of online poker, grinds a lot of online games, um, I know that it's very beneficial to get out there and spend some time with other people. So it's super fun to get the social experience. You can be out there to make your money while you're playing, or you can actually just go out and have some fun. And typically uh, at a casino, you know, especially on the weekends, people are often in a mood to have a good time. So it's it's a nice environment to be in if your primary skill set is related to poker, it's related to games, or it's related to strategy. This is going to be an environment that you're probably going to feel pretty comfortable in, and therefore, you know, you'll be able to be more comfortable, more at ease more relaxed and, and really be able to enjoy yourself and express yourself, which I think is really important in life. Uh, so next, the visceral experience. I find, you know, I'm a kid who played with Lego, a grown kid now, I always like to build stuff. And there's something really satisfying about building up towers of chips, you know, it's, it's a type of satisfaction that you don't get online. Yes, it's nice to run up your stacks online and see the numbers on the screen go up, but there's something really satisfying about just building a pile in front of you so i thoroughly enjoy the visceral experience of uh you know building towers in uh, cash games or tournaments so i'm a big fan of that part next one definitely softer competition it is without a doubt uh easier to outplay your opponents easier to make better decisions in live poker and overall easier to win due to the softer competition that is available in live play Obviously, this is offset a little bit with the fact that we can't uh, play as many tables as we could online. But um, you know, it's it's good to be able to just apply your skills, really feel the confidence, and know that you know your spots. And the thing about live poker is you get the time to think them through too. Speaking of uh, thinking things through and, and getting the edge, you also get more information. And with the more information that you get from tells, uh, general mannerisms, uh, things you can gather from conversation because people are a bit more communicative live than they are online. Uh, it's easier to get that information, profile your opponent and play better as a result uh, with a good idea of their strategy and understanding of the game. Finally, we have the VIP rewards, which depending on where you are, some of them are decent, some of them are not so good, um, but it's nice to be able to get rewards. And this is something, if you're going to a town like uh, Las Vegas or Atlantic City, or somewhere where there are a lot of casinos, it may be worth shopping around to find out what the rewards programs are because you may be able to get some comps that will make your trip much more uh, cost effective. Are there any other advantages you can think of to playing casino poker uh, versus online play? It's time to feel free to throw them in the chat. Just wanna see if there's anything that I missed because obviously I'd love to ensure that we, uh, we cover all the pros of playing casino poker, right? Robert's on point, so I'm gonna cook for you. You can get the casino food, and if you're at the right establishment, sometimes it's gonna be quite nice, right? Brandon, you know, the visualization, the scooping the pot, the sound when they push the chips your way. So it's, it's a lot of the, the visceral stuff and the sensual stuff and the, the really ex, experiential stuff that we get, you know? So, so for me, that was kind of it, practice online, and then go play live. And it's nice to be able to have an edge where you're expecting to make money most of the time, win more often than you lose session wise and win larger amounts than you lose uh, session by session. And that you kind of get to free roll a fun night out where you get to go play cards, hang out, likely make some money and you know get to be out there with the lights, and the music, and the sounds and the peoples and the food and all that. So glad that you know y'all y'all are into it too. So now let's compare casino poker versus private games. So both of these are in the live poker setting. And the biggest difference here is the safety. In a casino, you know there's security, you know there are cameras, uh, you know you're gonna get paid out, it's cash in, cash out, and you're just much more protected. Obviously, there's a little risk, you hear your stories here and there, but the, the risk profile of uh, casino poker versus private games, it's probably something like 99 to one. So it's definitely a lot safer to play at the casino. Um, again, the security that you're guaranteed to get paid out because that's an issue in private games, which we'll talk about in December. Next is choice. Uh, typically, the casino has many more tables that you're going to find at a private game. A private game usually has one or two tables unless it's a very high-end club. Maybe you'll get four. Casinos, you can have tens, 
sometimes even hundreds of tables, you know, if you're playing uh, at the Rio during the World Series of Poker. So the fact that there are so many games and so many limits to choose from is a huge perk to playing uh, casino poker. And we'll talk about how to capitalize on that later in the presentation. Finally, uh, service, which is exactly what uh, Robert was talking about. Depending on the venue, you can have you know good service and really good menus to choose from and all that. Um, arguable, some private games have that as well, but at many casinos, you're kind of guaranteed to get it. Uh, so any other advantages you can think of for casino games versus private games? And while you guys are um, posting that in the chat, I'll just share a story about my first time playing live poker at a casino. Um, so I was in college at the time and I'd been studying poker and I was really excited to go play live poker. I've been, I've been playing home games at the school and doing okay. I've been playing online and doing well and I was ready. You know, I was ready to go play live poker and I was going to school these casino fools and I was going to take care of business. So a friend of mine, uh, we organized it. He came to pick me up. We drove down. It was maybe an hour, hour 15 away from where we were attending school. And I was reviewing my Mike Caro's book of tells because I was going to get all my tells, all my reads on everyone. And I was just going to God mode it, right? So we show up at the casino and uh, we say, we'd like to play poker. And they say, cool, you can put your name on the wait list. We're like, wait list? They're like, yeah. Those are, there's the list. Uh, we'll put you on there. Your name will be, and I, I'm looking at the list being like, but I can't even see the bottom of it. They're like, yeah, well, that's why, you know, you should have called ahead. And then, you know, you wouldn't have to wait for as long. But these are the tables we have. These are the wait lists. So you're going to have to just go ahead and wait. I'm like, okay. So I put my name on 2 5 because it was the smallest game in the room. Go read my uh, Caro's book of tells and maybe Sklansky's Advanced Nolan Hold on Theory and Practice for however long the wait is, probably 45 minutes to an hour, finally get called, get on the game, find out it's not even no limit, it's 2-5 fixed limit, nothing that I'd learned mattered, it was basically a bingo game, which, you know, I got into the spirit of it, but it was not what I expected at all, because I didn't do my due diligence, I didn't do my preparation, and um, that's what, one of the many things we're going to go through in this presentation is how to do your preparation so that you don't end up in that same spot where you're waiting a long time, playing the wrong game, and just being really inefficient with your poker experience. Okay, so first let's talk about maximizing EV by picking the right venue and time. And this is where many people will already be familiar with this, but if you're not, the Bravo Poker app is your best friend. If you already have it on your phone, fantastic. If you're not, go to your Apple store or your Google Play store or Android store, whatever you have, and download the Bravo Poker app. Download it, install it, check it out, thank me later. This app is incredible. It will show you all the card rooms in the world, basically, and it will group them by which ones are the closest to you, and then you can scroll out on the map to see get farther and farther and farther away. Uh, in addition to listing all the casinos that are close to you that spread poker um, and exactly how far they are, it also includes the games that they spread as well as special promotions. So if you tap on a casino and drill down, it will tell you what tables they run, it will tell you what special promotions they have, like maybe a bad beat jackpot, uh, or tournaments or daily tournaments. And it'll probably have a contact number as well. So you can get all your information and know that they actually spread the game that you wanna play at the casino that's there. Cause maybe the closest one to you only has limit and you wanna play no limit, or they only have no limit and you wanna play pot limit Omaha. So this app, fantastic, and it's totally free. So once you got the Bravo app, the next thing you wanna do is call ahead and get informed. The best way to get information is to acquire the information from those who know best and whose job it is to inform you to get in. So I didn't do that, you know, early on. And I used to not call because I didn't really want to talk to people. I was more of a typing kind of computer guy, but that was my mistake. Because if you call in and you're nice with the floor people, you're cordial with the floor people, you ask reasonable questions, you don't ask too many questions, they're going to give you all the answers you need. From what games do you have? When do the big games run? When do the juiciest games run? When do you tend to have the most traffic? What time does the casino shut down at night? How long do you keep my spot on the wait list if I call in? Can I call in for a wait list? All these kind of things. You, you call in, you get the information, and they'll tell you because it's their job to bring you in. Any special promotions you guys have coming up, they're gonna tell you. Any rewards for the players that they have, they're gonna tell you. And the more information you have, 
the more effectively you can make the right decision as to the best place to play poker for you, the best place to invest your time and energy. Um, speaking of that added value, you know, ask them if they have, you know, bad B jackpots um, or, or tournament series. And, you know, this is kind of what you see if you drill down into the Bravo Poker app. If there's a big bad B jackpot, you're going to get a lot more people at the card room because everyone's trying to hit it. But the games are probably going to be a little nittier because everyone's just trying to run the boards and see if they can hit the bad B jackpot. On the other hand, if you go and there's a tournament series going on, you're going to have a lot more players who are tournament players but who aren't cash games who are more recreational than the typical cash game players because they're going for the excitement of a tournament and a lot of them will go play cash after they bust the tournament, probably not be in the right mindset for cash, probably be a little stuck, a little chasing, a little trying to get even. So if you're a cash game player, cash game specialist, and you can find out when a tourney series is going on and post up at the cash tables, you are going to for sure make more money because you're going to be in softer games. And then, um, yeah, I guess I already discussed that, that there's massive value during the tournament series. So find out when they're when they're running, find out when they're coming up. And the floor people will tell you everything. They're so excited to tell you about their big promotion, their big yearly tournament, all the satellites that are running to it. And if you can plan your trips around when they're running their events, whether it's the satellites, whether it's a bad beat jackpot, whether it's some other kind of promo, you're just gonna get in better games and you're gonna make more money because those promotions are gonna draw people in who aren't as serious of players, but they're there for the fun and the thrill. And as we know, that's where you're gonna make the most money in the card games. All right, so that was about, what was that topic? That was picking the right venue and time. Now we're gonna look at how to save time and make money. These are mostly just practical things but things I've learned over the years that save me a ton of time and get me in a way better spots and greatly increase my hourly rate when I go play cards. So first thing to do is know your travel time. Great thing is Bravo app will tell you where the casino is. Boom, you punch that into a map quest or whatever GPS app you have on your phone. It'll tell you what the distance to the casino is. And if you called ahead and you know how long your seat is held for, well, let's say they hold your seat for 60 minutes and you have a 90 minute drive. You can go ahead and call when you're 40 minutes into your drive, 50 minutes away from the casino and know that you're gonna get close to the maximum of that 60 minute wait time. Now you don't wanna time it where it's exactly 60 because if you run into traffic, you're not gonna make it on time. And usually if you show up too late, your name's gonna be off the list. But if you show up early before your name's there, but your name is at the top, you're welcome to go on the table. You know, you don't have to wait till it's exactly your max time. Your name is just moving up the list. And the more time your name is on the wait list, the farther up the list your name is gonna be by the time you get there. So ideally, you wanna set it where you have about a 10 to 15 minute forgiveness window, but otherwise call in the maximum time ahead so that you have as much time as possible for your name to move up the list while you're driving there, you know? So you're making the wait list work for you while you have to do travel time and eat. Um, so for that, you want to call ahead and you need to know how long they'll hold your spot. This is where your research from before can work or just when you call them, you can say, hey, how long do you hold my seat for? And if they say, you know, 90 minutes, but you're two hours away. Don't know why you'd really play a casino that's two hours away, but just for the case of example, it's fine. You'd say, OK, I'll call you back in about half an hour. You wouldn't put your name on the list then because it's an extra thing they'd have to do and they have to move you. You say, OK, I'll call back in half an hour. So you call ahead. Next thing to do. When you put your name on the list, put your name on multiple lists. Because the same way we were speaking about how the, the more time you call in ahead, the more time your name is working up the list. Well, if you're on multiple lists, you're working your way up multiple lists at the same time. And whichever list is shorter is the one you're more likely to, to get to the top of first. Now, if you're someone who enjoys playing 2-5 No Limit Hold'em and the 5-10 game is quite big, Maybe don't put your name on that list, but put your name on two, five, and one, three. If you're a one, three player, but you know, you could handle a two, five if you just buy in shorter than the max, you know, buy in for 300 at two, five, put your name on both of the lists. You never know if the two, five games might be fantastic and the one, three games are not so hot, but by putting your name on both lists, you get the choice and you have two lists working for you rather than one. Now, I wouldn't put my name on a PLO list because I don't really play PLO, 
But just that idea of having your name working up multiple lists is very helpful. Now, I did think that there was a perk to being on a table and then requesting a table change, like you were gonna get priority. And this is worth finding out what the policy is. But for most casinos that I've played at, the table change priority, which you know, you'd be at the top of the, let's say you're on table 701, you're top of the one three list when you wanna move to another table, you get to move before someone else gets put on a game, but it only applies to the limit you're playing. So if you go two five and instantly request a table change to one three, you're not going to get top priority there, but you would if you're staying on two five. So that's why putting your name on games that, on the list for Nate, games you're willing to play makes sense, but for games that are for sure out of your bankroll or out of your comfort zone, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. The next thing you wanna do is check in on arrival because you don't wanna get bumped. Uh, typically, your, your seat is held for the amount of time they tell you, but as soon as you check in, now your seat is, is good, right? So if, if they hold it for 60 minutes and you show up 62 minutes or you show up 40 minutes ahead, right? And you have 20 minutes of wait time. If you don't confirm that you're there, they won't even call your name. As soon as your 60 minutes is up, your name just disappears. So make sure you check in as soon as you get there so your name goes from being a call-in to someone who's here and on the wait list, and then they'll actually call you. I've had the experience of missing my seat. Fortunately, I knew the floor person, so I was able to get back on the list, but you, you don't wanna risk it. You don't wanna risk it. So check it on arrival, don't get bumped, um, because the wait can be very long. And then finally, know the floor manager or the director. If you know the floor manager or the poker room director, when little things like that happen, where you forget to check in, they'll check you in. Um, you know, they, they might even put you higher up on the list. They, I mean, in, in some rooms, they might even just say, uh, oh, don't worry about the, there's a seat, just go take the seat, go take the seat. Well, we'll get someone from the list later. Um, there are many things that can work in your favor when people like you. And when the people who are in, who are running the show like you, you have a much better chance of good things happening. You, you have a much better chance of good fortune coming your way. So tips are not required, but they're certainly appreciated. Not all casinos will allow people to tip the floor staff, but if you can, I highly encourage it. If you can't tip the floor staff with money, you can still tip them with a compliment. You can still tip them by being polite. You can maybe, if you're playing at a place very frequently, maybe you can find out what the floor person's into, maybe they like sports, maybe you buy them a ticket for a game or something sometime. There are many ways you can work around just straight giving them money, but the better your relationship is with the floor manager or the director, the better your experience is gonna be at the casino every time you go play guaranteed. So if you have one spot you frequent very frequently, go ahead and try to make friends with as many as the floor people, staff, dealers, directors, everyone as possible. Uh, you'll get perks, you'll get rulings in your favor, and also you'll just feel more comfortable, more welcome, and you'll be more excited to go to the casino because there will be people there who are looking forward to see you. And it's always more fun to go to a party when people are excited to see you than a party where no one knows who you are. Um, yeah, okay, so that's 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 how to save time and money. And just, it's, it's from personal experience. Uh, I've, <laughs> I've wasted so much time by not knowing about calling ahead by forgetting to check in when I got there, by not doing the multiple list thing. And then as soon as I kind of added all these tricks, oh my God, I've, I've never had to wait more than like 10 minutes to get on a table. And I usually get in a really good game. So speaking of good games, you want to start your session off right. And often there will be some waiting time. Um, there, there will be some waiting time. So the best thing to do while you're waiting is to watch while you wait. I used to sit at the rail when I would get to Falls View Casino and watch the tables that I could that were close to the rail. Probably half of them were near the rail, half of them weren't. And what I was looking for when I was watching was trying to find the best table in the room. Uh, you're, I'd be looking for drinking. I'd be looking for laughter. I'd be looking for cash on the table. I'd be looking for sloppy chips. I'd just be looking for crazy action and people who look like they're having a party. I wouldn't just look at where the big stacks were or tables that had a lot of chips to play, but who are they in front of? If the big stacks are in front of a bunch of regulars, well, the game might already be you know, running down. But if the big stacks are in front of players you've never seen before, or players who look wasted, or players who look exhausted like they haven't slept for two days, that's probably a really good game, right? 
And if you know what the best table in the room is, then as soon as you get on a table, you can request a table change to that specific table, right? We'll talk a little bit about table changes at the end of the slide, but it's good to think about. And since you're going to invest time acquiring information later, that's what you do once you're sitting at the table between hands anyway, why not invest that same time before you sit down at the table and save yourself the time so you can go straight to practice, straight to execution as soon as you get in the game. It's the same as putting your name on the wait list while you're driving there and making most of the time while you're just driving. You're gonna be waiting anyway, why not make the most of that time so that once you get in the game, you can get straight to action. Same as you put your name on the wait list so when you get to the casino, you can get straight to playing. Next up, take the seat you're given. Time on table increases expectation. As long as you didn't put your name down for like a 10, 20 list when you're a one, three primary, when you play one, three primarily, whatever seat you're given, you're gonna have a positive expected value by being on that table. And you're better off being on a table than waiting for the best table. So always take the seat you're given. You can immediately start getting hands. You can start making decisions, start making money. But also once you're on a table, you can put your name on the table change list to get on a better table and you stay at the top of the list. If you don't take the seat you're given, sometimes you will be bumped down to the list again. So just, just take it. Next up, once you get your seat, take it seriously. Um, I remember when I was going to the casino, I would play you know, 2-5, 5-10. My main game was 5-10, but I'd play 2-5 while I was waiting. And occasionally I'd play 10-20. And I remember being in a 2-5 game, waiting for actually no i think back then they even had one two so i think i was in a one two game while we were waiting for the five ten game to get going and there was a five ten player who bought in with a purple five hundred dollar chip which you don't see at one two tables and he was just punting so hard and i'm like dude what's the deal and he's like oh this game's boring man i'm waiting for the big game to start like ah, i don't even care about this but you know, once you punt off two, three, four of those $500 chips, you're stuck. And then when he gets to 510, he's already chasing. So even if it may not be as exciting to play the smaller game, it's really good practice to just make great decisions, to practice good habits. And then you'll be in the right state of mind when you get to the bigger game. Now, probably this player was just an action player who was going to play cards for the rush, for the excitement, and so, you know, he wasn't thinking about the game the same way I was. But even if I'm going to play 510, if the first seat I get is the one two seat, I'm going to take it and, you know, get into my poker zone, get comfortable. I'm going to take it seriously because what I'm what I'm there for is not I'm not thinking about how can I make the most money as quickly as possible. I'm thinking about what's going to lead to me making the best decisions, because that's what's going to lead to making the most money. And the way to make the best decisions at the bigger game is to start making the best decisions as soon as you sit down or even before you get to the casino because that means you're in the right mindset to make the best decisions. Now, once you're on that table and you've taken the seat that you're given, if you aren't on the best game, which you will hopefully have identified before you even sat down, request a table change and be specific on the table you want. If you know what the best game is or the best two or three games in the room, say, I would like a table change to table five, six and nine, right? And when one of those comes up, you'll get on that table. Or if they're all kind of marginal except for table, you say, I would like a table change to table 11. If C comes up, I'll go on table 11, otherwise I'll stay here, that's fine. If you don't know what the best table is, but you know that your table is no good, you say table change to any. And as soon as the seat opens up on another table, they'll move you to another seat. Um, yeah. So the more you know, the more specific you can be and you can get to that table where the greener pastures are. But if you don't know which tables are better, you just know that your table is no good, just request a table change to any and start moving around the poker room until you figure out where the best game's at. And this is where knowing the floor person or having a team of friends at the casino really helps because they'll tell you, the floor person's like, hey, this guy's really going off tonight. You might want to go get in that game. I know you're not a PLO player, but I think it's worth it going for PLO tonight because they know this stuff. And you know, if you're taking care of them, they're going to take care of you too. So take your first seat, take the one you're given, take it seriously, but as soon as you can, try to get to the greenest pastures in the room because you will have identified them while you were waiting. 
All right, uh, my apologies, I don't have animations for the pictures on the next two slides. So let's talk about maximizing EV, positioning yourself to profit. So you already know how to get on the best table, look for the table that's basically a party, or look for the table where you see a bunch of bigger stacks in front of players who don't look like they're at their sharpest, right? Or players you don't recognize who just look like they have no business having a stack like that or playing in a game like that. So the next thing you wanna do is get in the best seat. And Jonathan speaks about this, I speak about this. I have to imagine every poker coach out there speaks about this. Money flows clockwise around the poker table. That's just the structure of the game because of position, money flows clockwise around the poker table. So try to get to the left of your targets. Once you've identified the best table, you probably identified the best spots to target for the weakest players or the most tilted players, most out of their comfort zone players, whatever. And you wanna to try to get to the left of them. So first things first, get on the table. Next things next, try to get a seat on the left of the people who you are targeting, who the game is built around. Now on that note, when it comes to buying in, the old thinking was you wanna buy in to cover everyone. If you're the best player on the table, you wanna be playing with the deepest stack. Now the more we studied poker, the more we learned about poker, that's not always true because again, Chips tend to flow to the left, there's a positional advantage, and the deeper the stacks are, the more amplified that positional advantage is. So if the only players to your left are good players and they're deep stacked and everyone else is shallow, you don't wanna buy in deep. Then you're just playing at a disadvantage against the players who are deep stacked and you have no additional advantage over the players who are shorter stacked who are the players you're targeting. So the, the main strategy, knowing that money flows to the left, is to buy in deeper than those on your right, but to be wary of those on your left who are deep stacked. You don't need to buy in for the max always. Again, that old adage that if you're the best player, you wanna buy in for the most, not fully applicable. And given how many good players are not buying in super deep to play deep stack out of position versus a solid player, it's just, it's just not giving you an edge. So once you get to the table, scan the table and pick your buy-in based on that. Remember, you can always add more chips up to the table maximum, but you aren't allowed to take chips off the table. So it's better to buy in for less than the max and quickly top up if you realize having the max is the way to go, rather than buying in for the max right away and then potentially being stuck in a situation where you didn't want to buy in for the table max because it wasn't the best, uh, the best EV play. So next, um, I mean, this kind of goes to in the same vein as getting the best seat, changing seats. If you're at a casino where there's a seat change button, as they have a Casino Niagara, ask for the seat change button. Um, if they're at a casino where they don't have a seat change button, just know when a seat opens up, first come, first serve, first request gets it, be quick to say, hey, uh, I, I'd like to take that seat. You know, if the player's driving, they'll be like, oh, are you, are you finishing the session? No, okay, no worries. Yeah, oh, one more orbit, yeah, okay. Uh, dealer, I'd like his seat when he's done. Now, the the players who you're you're targeting may be aware of this. Sometimes you'll move, they'll move, but it's, it's better to go for it than to not go for it. If you have the chance to get a more lucrative seat, uh, a better value seat, um, then, then to not try. So, yeah, uh, that being said, you're, if, if you already have the best seat on the table, that's it. The other thing, if you're close to the best seat on the table, but not literally the best seat, maybe you don't want to draw attention to your mark, your target, the person the game is built around. Or maybe you don't want to ask for the seat change button as soon as you sit down because it is going to affect your table image. It is going to affect, you know, clearly how much you know about the game, how much of a regular you are. And sometimes you don't want to draw attention to that. So when you get to the table, kind of rank the seats at the table, one through nine, and if you're in a top three seat, maybe you don't need to get the seat change button right away or ask for a seat change right away. But if you're in the lower half, then definitely go for the upgrade whenever you can. And you know, you'll you'll use you'll use your poker sense and your intuitive sense to decide when it makes sense to go for a seat change versus when it makes sense to just uh, maintain a low profile image. Finally, topping up uh, something I've always been a big fan of. I buy in you know when I buy in for 100 blinds, I'd always top up to 100 blinds. I'd, I'd lose a pre-flop race, top up to 100 blinds. Three bet failed, top up 10 more blinds. 
uh, open a pot, see bet, lose on the turn, top up. Um, because I want to have as many chips as I'm allowed to have that give me the opt optimal stack size. Uh, and as I mentioned before, you can always add more chips to the table. You can't take them off. So yeah, better buy in shorter and top up when you get better seed. Yeah, cool. So that is how to position yourself to profit. I hope all of that makes sense. It's all of this is just about putting yourself in a position where you're going to make more money um, by playing the same poker you would if you were in a different seat. But because you're in a better seat, you're just going to make more money. Because you're in a better game, you're just going to make more money. You're boosting your hourly by doing the little extra things that other people don't want to do because they're lazy. Um, and you don't even have to play poker any differently once you get in position. Okay, next, uh, staying in the money which is again, all about maximizing EV. So be willing to move around, be willing to change tables. I think the worst thing a player can do, and I've seen players do this time and time again, they show up, they get a seat, floor puts them in a seat, they stay in the seat for like eight hours, just grind. They don't look at the other tables to see what's going on, they don't put their name on a table change list. They don't even ask for a seat change ever. The only time they request a seat change is so they can see the TV better. And they're just missing out on so much value by not putting themselves in the prime spot to profit. And yeah, it takes a little work. Sometimes you gotta walk around the room to scout the tables. You gotta go for bathroom breaks anyway. Again, if you have friends, you know dealers or whatever, you got another excuse, you go say what's up to your friends, and while you're doing that, you're kind of scouting the scene. If you're willing to do that, I promise you, you will make more money, you'll 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 get in better games, and you'll just have more fun playing poker, guarantee you. So second point is that keep an eye and an ear out for better games. You're gonna see madness, you're gonna hear people being like, oh, you know, big pot, or oh my God, or cussing, or whatever, you'll hear it. And then you just kind of got to look over and see what's going on and, and, and suss it out. Is it just a bad beat? Things happen or, oh, is someone actually playing like a complete maniac? And the more attuned you are to the environment, the more likely you're going to be to find the best one, two, one, three, two, five, five, ten game, whatever it is. Usually once you go bigger, there's only one game at the limit anyway. So there's not a lot of choice. But in those smaller limits, one, two, one, three, two, five, 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 uh, even five, ten. They're usually multiple tables, and one of them will be way better than the other ones. So it's, it's worth figuring out what that table is, getting there, and then getting the best seat. Now, this is something that I did poorly when I first you know, was learning about this. I got a little too obsessed with trying to get in the best game. So you don't want to play musical chairs all night. Being in a great game is fine. You don't always need to be in the best game. The important thing is to make sure you're not sitting in a bad game for any longer than necessary and that you refuse to play in a terrible game. As long as you are in an upper tier game, you know, a good game, a great game, an excellent game, perfect. The important thing is getting out of the games where everyone's a reg, everyone's a pro, or everyone's a net, or there's no action, there's no spot. Once you're on a pretty decent game, it can be better than going for, you know, the quote unquote perfect game, because if you're in a great game and you have reads on the opponents, that may be a higher value setup for you than being in the best game in the room where you have no reads yet. You're going to have to take half an hour, an hour to, fig to figure everybody out. So don't undervalue your game just because people are hooting and hollering at another table um, and don't undervalue the value of the reads you have and the, um, table image you have and the dynamic you have with people because that's worth a lot so there we talked about never stay in a bad game for any longer than necessary and um, tap into the floor in your network as i mentioned earlier in the presentation i'll mention it again and i'll mention it in the next presentation knowing the floor helps with this having friends in the room helps a lot with this knowing the floor helps a little having friends in the room helps a lot your friends will tell you where the best game is. Your friends will tell you when someone is going off. Your friends will tell you when you need to get on a game. And this is why having a team to play with is extremely valuable uh, when you frequent the card room on a regular basis. And that's why next webinar, we're going to talk about how to get those friends in your circle 
so you can grow your circle and as a result grow your chip stacks grow your bankroll and uh you know grow grow all your poker success and accolades so putting it all together step one is to maximize your hourly with minimal effort by planning ahead um, by planning ahead, you maximize your hourly or return on time investment with no extra effort. Once you've done the planning, all you need to do is follow through with the plan. Once you've got on the best table, all you need to do is sit, in the sit on the table and play. But it's that little bit of planning ahead that goes a long way, and it's 100% worth the investment. Number two, the best way to make money is to find the best place, time, and day to play. I, I feel like we, we didn't actually touch on that, and I probably should have mentioned it. Usually the best day to play is a Friday or Saturday night because you're gonna have the most people there who are there at the party, who are there to just, just blow off some steam and gamble, and you're not gonna have the same grinders that you find on the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So when the tournaments are going on, it's gonna be great, but on a week to week basis, usually Friday and Saturday are gonna be the best times to play. But again, if you know the floor, you can ask, when do you run the most tables? When is the card room at its busiest? And if you have friends who play, They'll tell you when the best games are. And you'll quickly find out. Like when I, when I was playing a lot at Falls View back when they had poker there, um, the big game was on Thursday night and it was 10 20. And if you showed up by five o'clock or six o'clock, you could get in the game. And if you didn't show up by five or six, you were going to be on the wait list and you were probably going to never get in because no one who got on that game was going to get out of that game. So the move was to go play, go up on Thursday night play in the big game, stay overnight, play Friday night, stay overnight. If still feeling it, play Saturday night. If not feeling it, it's too tired, go back home. And let's say there's work on Friday, uh, on Friday, then the move was to go up on Friday, play Friday night, stay overnight, Saturday night, go home. And the more you go, the more you speak with people, the more you'll figure out what the best days are, um, the best times, and that. Knowing when last call is super helpful. Knowing if the last call never happens and people can drink all night, pretty helpful. All the useful information. So number three, call ahead to minimize wait time and maximize your table time, but don't forget to leave a cushion for traffic, unforeseen events. The last thing you want to do is really, you know, get super nitty and try to time it within the minute, and then you get bumped from the list because you were too slow. Number four, watch while you wait to identify the most profitable positions in the card room because once you've identified what they are, you can make the efforts to try to get yourself in those positions. And once you're in those positions, time to sit back, apply your strategy and collect your profits. Number five, know the value of your seats. If possible, be on the lookout for a more valuable seats, but don't undervalue your seat. Truly value your seat. Um, a lot of times your seat's worth more than you think it is. And that's all about keeping up with who's 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 even even keeled, steady footed, still minded, who's tilted, who's stuck, how many people in your game are losing, how many people are winning. Uh, look for games where people are losing, look for games where people are stuck, look for games where people are frustrated, look for games where people are drinking, look for games where people are going on a lot of smoke breaks because clearly they're 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 tilted and they're looking to calm down. Um, but don't necessarily put yourself in a game where everyone is uh, flaming out with anger, right? You got you got to think about the environment you're in. But consider those things, and the the more that's why I say your game may be better than you think it is, because if you're winning steadily and a lot of people are losing and they're getting frustrated, that's good for you because they're going to be misplaying against you because they're stuck and they want to see they want to get even with you. You know, a lot of these emotional players, they don't want to see the same person win. They want, you know, someone else to get their turn. So they start going after you. And as long as they're out of position versus you, that's going to be profitable for you. Finally, number six, your net worth will increase your poker net worth. And that's what we're going to talk about next week with the traits that you want to uh, embody, live by, uh, the traits you want to look for in other people where you build your network and specific tactics or techniques you can use to um, bring together that uh, dream team. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you for sharing this, your evening with me and uh, have yourself a great night. And uh, until next time, you know what to do. Take what you learned, go out there and get stacking. This has been Evan Jarvis for pokercoaching.com. Uh,
Thanks for tuning in and I will see you at the next one.